title of the book that we're dealing with now. I'm going to go to the 107th Psalm. That Psalm is 107. The book of Psalms, as you're telling there, is a interesting book to try to study, especially for someone who is a historical or contextual type of student. Because Psalms kind of is an amalgamated piece of work from all kinds of places and all kinds of, kinds of time frames and several different authors and there are a lot of different situations. Realistically, the book of Psalms is a song book. We, you know, some of us have seen the book Sister Knows put together the blue song book that we had where she had compiled songs that had been written from several people over all kinds of time periods. That's the book of Psalms, that's what we have here. We're looking at somebody's hymnal without the sheet music. Right. Um, and as it was written by a lot of different people over a lot of different times, then there's things that got lost. And you see people who will try to categorize the Psalms and do deep interpretation into the Psalms, and it gets really hairy trying to figure out what kind this is and what kind that is when you look at what's been written on it in the commentary. But basically, you're looking at a songbook that was written by several people, mainly David, Solomon, Hezekiah, different people that they, and they also commissioned people to write songs. In other words, they had people on staff whose responsibility it was to be musicians and to be singers and had them write the songs. And so this is what we're looking at and observing is a cultural history of the worship of Israel and of praises and worship. But interestingly enough, everything one of the reasons I like the book of Psalms, everything in here is not just, it's, it's not all praise. You see a lot of different human conditions being expressed throughout the Psalms. There are songs of lament where people are expressing grief and hardship and heartache. And one of the reasons why we tell people when they first get saved that the Psalms, the Psalms is a good starting book is because there's almost nothing that you're going to feel on an emotional level that you can't find where somebody else had to deal with it and see them in their struggle and how they felt as a child of God dealing with that struggle. You also have some psalms in there that are uh, essentially almost curses, where, pe not, where people are asking, God give, they did me wrong, I want you to get back. I know we don't feel that today, but back then, those folks wanted, God to, wanted folks to get God because they couldn't always strike out and they were looking for justice and so, you, like I said, you see everything in the book of Psalms that you possibly going to experience. Uh, the 107th Psalm, I'm going to jump around. Gonna, uh, don't have to write all the scriptures down. Just say with Psalm 107, the first and second uh, verses. But I'm going to jump around throughout the Psalm as I read. Um, first verse. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let's jump to the 15th verse. It says, Oh, let men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron and sunder. 21st verse. Oh, let men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let the sacrifice of sac let the sacrifice, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. 31st verse says, Oh, let men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. And finally, we're going to go to the 43rd verse. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. I'm going to use for a subject for a few minutes biblical praise from biblical people. I need to do a little bit of background teaching or talking about what we're looking at and what we're dealing with beyond what I've already said. Like I said, though, this is written by 
the Church of Israel, the nation of Israel, commissioned during the time of the Unified King. And we all understand that this was written by the nation's people, by the people of Israel. It was more specifically written by the people of Israel when they were acting like the nation of Israel as opposed to acting like <coughs> Jacob's kids. Right. So they all know, you see some kid acting full over there, you wonder, where is his mama, whose kid is that? And, oh, that's Charmina's kid. Oh, all right, fine. You, you, you already know they're acting full, and that's all. But they were acting at the time that this was written during the Unified Kingdom. They were acting like the nation of Israel, the people that the people of the living God, living a lifestyle that God had defined for them all the way back in the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, those very long books that have that seem almost irrelevant to us today, provided the children of Israel profound insight into God, God's plan for them. And how to relate to God. In the Ten Commandments and in the law, you saw where God began to define every aspect of who the children of Israel were supposed to be. Having been delivered from Egypt and the Egyptian life of God, delivers them as a nation, and everything about who Israel was intended to be from that point on came from God's word and God's direction. And by everything, I mean everything. What time you uh, or what you were supposed to eat, how you were supposed to make your clothes, how you were supposed to handle debt, what your financial plan was supposed to be like, how you were supposed to handle raising your children, how you were supposed to interact with somebody if they took something from you, how you were supposed to treat your neighbors, how you were supposed to look at and think about other people, what you were supposed to do with the land, and how you were supposed to revive how farm at one point and then move on. Everything about who the nation of Israel was supposed to be came from God's revelation through Moses to those people. Everything about who they were supposed to be came from the word of God. There was nothing about who Israel was intended to be that God didn't make clear from them. He gave them a Mount Sinai through Moses an identity that was completely different than who they had been. And as a nation, as you saw them progress, when Israel was in God's favor, they were operating in such a way that 